and welcome to another episode of Women of Abundant Wealth, where we're reestablishing the destinies that have been redirected. You know, a lot of times our destinies are redirected for so many reasons, either because we did it ourselves or we allowed other people to do it for, it, for us, but nevertheless, they've been redirected. And here at Women of Abundant Wealth, we want you to get back on track and become the person that you was created to be. You know, God has always had a plan for your life, and he's always had a purpose, and he always had a path, a certain path that only you can take and nobody else. I can't take that path for you, and you can't take mine for me. And so what happens is we get off that path when we try to live the lives of everybody else, and it just doesn't work. We friend people as somebody else, and then when we realize who we really are, we come to find out sometimes that, hey, I don't really like you that much, or you don't really like me that much, or we really have nothing in common, or we just don't get along. Because when you meet people, whether it's in a uh, romantic relationship or just friendships, you're trying to betray someone that you're not to get the other person to like you. So, hey, why not just be you anyways and cut out all the middle stuff, the end stuff, the arguments, all that stuff. Just cut it all out. Today we're talking about personal branding. But in order to do branding, really do branding, you have to be who you was called to be. Because what will happen is you'll put something out there. And I've done that before when I was young in my business. I would put stuff out there and it just wasn't who I was. And I was trying to figure out why it wasn't working is because my personality wasn't matching what I was putting out and I wasn't drawing the individuals that I was called to solve a problem for. So when you're talking about personal branding, the first thing that we want to do is we want to start from the inside. We want to make sure you're being you so that when the stylist comes, she can make sure that it matches up. Today I have with me someone very special. She has helped me with my branding, going to this next level of where I'm going to. She is awesome. She has really just shook me and got things out of me and bought things out of me that I even forgotten was there. She even helped areas of my life to come alive again with her coaching and her mentoring and her teaching. And I want you guys to help me welcome Miss Andrea Patrick. Hi, Andrea. Hi, how are you? Thank you for having me. I am so glad I had to share you. I really didn't want to. <laughs> I really didn't want to. You know how when you find the good stuff, I do. You want to keep it. I do. You're absolutely right. Keep it all to yourself. Yeah. Secret. Thank I you, know, though. but I couldn't because I know that there's so many people out there on the inside dying because they walk by certain signs. I know I would see signs in different people. I was like, well, I want that. I'm, well, mm -hmm. I can't do that because of this right here. But it's really not so. I just wasn't bringing out who I was. And you helped me in this level of my life where I was going to. Well, thank you. Oh, my God. You're, you're right, though. It's absolutely true. When you are not yourself, your authentic self, it's very difficult for you to share your fabulousness with the world. And that's what we want as entrepreneurs. We are individuals, and we want to sell our product or our service mm -hmm. in a way that others can relate to us. It makes selling and doing business easy. But before we can do that, we really have to know who we are on the inside. And that's what personal branding is all about for me. I'm extremely passionate about it. Yes, we know about that. <laughs> I can attest to that, that you are definitely passionate about it. So speaking of who we are, share with our audience who you are. Who is Andrea Patrick? Well, she's a complicated being, <laughs> but for the most part, she's fun-loving. She's very casual. She's not pretentious by any stretch of the imagination. And her overall goal is to make people look and feel their best. And that's just in with friendships, that's in business, that's with customers. It's all about making them feel comfortable and, and just kind of the homey feeling. That's what I'm all about. Just, you know, foot loose and fancy free. Oh, wow. <laughs> so what made, you, what made you decide, you know, hey, I need to do this. What were you doing before you even did the branding? Were you walking in? You're calling or was you just doing stuff? You know, I'm so glad to have this platform, Katrina, because I haven't really shared that with anyone. And the truth of the matter is this process started when I was about 30 years old. Wow. And you guys know, you know, as you get older, you um, begin to kind of do a little introspection. For me, it was mm -hmm. around 30. And I started to recognize that um, I was an adult. <laughs> and a lot of the things that I was being was being thrown at me, um, 
I could say no. It was a complete sentence. Um, as long as I could deal with the consequences of my actions, I could pretty much do what I wanted to do. I didn't start to realize that until I was about 30. Okay. But prior to that, I did get a degree in marketing, and I did have, get my cosmetology license. So it's always been about making things look and feel their best. However, when I started this introspective process and looking at myself from the inside, really discovering who I was, that was when I realized how I needed to interact with other people, how my interactions mm -hmm. in business, in my personal life, in my friendships, what those needed to look like in order for me to be my best self. And uh, so that's kind of how the journey began. And it took me a minute to get there. I started off, like I said, cosmetology, hair, makeup, mm -hmm. and then it went on to um, wardrobe, uh, fashion, consignment, women's consignment, and then it morphed on into styling and doing fashion styling for some uh, pseudo celebrities here in the Dallas area, fashion shows, mm -hmm. things of that nature. And then in that walk, I realized that really wasn't what I wanted to do. I really wanted to tap into the ordinary woman, the ordinary man, mm -hmm. help them look and feel their best. So it, it kind of morphed into the small business owner who really mm -hmm. wanted to connect with their audience. And so I use my degree in marketing, my ability to do hair and makeup to really walk in that purpose mm -hmm. and then help small business owners to uh, really be their best self and resonate with their audience in a clear, consistent, and authentic way. Wow, and you, and you do that, and you articulate it well. Thank you. And <laughs> you, you explain it well, because I know when you would sit down with me, it was work. <laughs> I'm telling y'all, it was work, because you had little things that I had to do each week. I had to, I had there to really put skin in the game. You I did. had to get to work. You, did. you just didn't say, you're this, you're that. You didn't tell me. I had to figure those things it's out. It's your journey. It really yes. is your journey, and you have to discover yourself. And there are some hard truths that you'll run yes. into in doing that. But it's all for your game. It's all to mm -hmm. build you up so that you can be the best person you can possibly be. Knowing yourself inside and out is really the key to being successful at anything because it's how you, you interact with the world. It's how you know what will work for you, what your non-negotiables are, mm -hmm. um, the types of people that you would work best with. The whole thing is to have this optimal journey mm -hmm. of entrepreneurship and in life, and you'll, you'll just do your best thing. You'll be your best self when you know yourself. Yeah, because I remember sitting down with you and I looked at you and I was like, you'd ask me something. I was like, you know, <laughs> I haven't thought about that in years. And yeah, that, that is something I would do. And you was like, really? And you asked me, why did you stop doing it? I was like, well, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Life and, you know, rules and regulations. And this is how an adult's supposed to act versus a child. And I've learned to just throw that stuff mm -hmm. out the window, mm -hmm. all those rules and regs, because it's not necessarily true, and it really stifles you from it being does. who you were called to be. It really does, because we try to be someone else. We, um, and I'll be honest, when I started my business, I was trying to do fashion blogging. Well, mm -hmm. I am not, I don't look like the fashion blogger, the, those that are the most successful, you know. I don't look like that. And I was trying to walk in that, and it was mm -hmm. very difficult. I wasn't happy with the things that I was wow. putting out. I didn't like the way I looked in certain things. And it was more stressful for me to try to be something that I wasn't than it was for me to just accept who I was and operate in that. Wow. So we all go through yeah, it. We do. So tell us a bit about your, your company. What do you do now? You explained to us how you were trying to do the thing, <laughs> but get down to it. Because people are, are really confused. When you're talking about branding and, and all that stuff and stylists, because people think about wardrobe, they think mm -hmm. about hair, but what really is that brand? What You always talk about that style thread. Yes. What is that? What does that look like? Well, we all have these commonalities that are significant from what has inspired us and what has influenced us. And when we take a really close look at those things, you begin to see this thread that runs through everything you do. And I call that your style thread. It's not your wardrobe. When I say style in the mm -hmm. sense of a style thread, it's not your clothing, right? It's your style. I always tell people, your best friend knows you better than anybody else. You can live on totally separate ends of the earth. But mm -hmm. if she walks into a furniture store and she sees something that she'll say, that is so Katrina. That's yes. her style. I can see her it, with that in her house. That's yeah. what I mean. Your preferences. Mm -hmm. When you find those preferences, those threads of preferences, it allows you to make better decisions. 
for yourself and your business because now you're operating according to what works best for you, not yes. what you see other people, because other people's success is not gonna be the same as your success, right? right. You have to make your own decisions. Mm -hmm. You have to walk your own walk. So your success is gonna look completely different. It's like a fingerprint. It's gonna look completely different than someone else's. You could use the same tools. You can mm -hmm. use some of the same methods, but your narrative is all your own. So when I call myself a personal branding stylist, that's what I am. I help you. I have a client who says, um, you introduced me to myself. Oh, that's good. That's what she said. <laughs> so I introduce my clients to themselves, but then I also help them to uh, share that fabulousness with mm -hmm. the world. So that's what the personal branding piece of it is, helping you to kind of introducing you to yourself. Mm -hmm. But then the stylist part of it is that nonverbal messaging that is going to help attract people to you. So it's putting together your look, putting mm -hmm. together your story that is the visual, the nonverbal messaging mm -hmm. that you want people to get. So it's your story, and you have to decide how you want to tell it, the way you dress, mm -hmm. the way you present yourself digitally with your website, with your social media, mm -hmm. your blog, the content, the way you mm -hmm. write. How are you a storyteller? Are you a fact giver? Are you an educator? Um, your ads that you put on Facebook. You know, the images that you put out, it's all about you tapping into your own preferences and your own narrative because the people that really connect with that, mm -hmm. that really relate to your story, those are going to be your clients. Yes. I always tell people, you want to be a big fish in a small pond. What that means mm -hmm. is you want those little fish attracted to you because you're the one that stands out for their needs. Right. Um, if you're in a huge pond, right? and you're a small fish in the big pond, there are so many other people doing what you do that mm -hmm. you're gonna get lost. Yes. So the only thing you can control, the only differentiating you can do is in yourself because it's what makes you special. Wow. Yeah. So when they first sit down, how would someone know? Because people don't know or they, they think they, oh, I don't need, well, mm -hmm. I, then I don't need that. I know who I am, I know, but you know, my favorite scripture is when it says our, our life and our identity is hidden in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. So unless you are connected to him, you really don't know who you, you are. You really don't know. It's, it's, you, you it's, don't. That's true. You're you absolutely do, right. You just do not. That's so absolutely right. how do you t tell them you do need this? How do you show them that they need it if they asked you? Well, it's about are you connecting with the people you want to connect with? I always tell people, you know, all money isn't good money true okay so are you finding yourself in situations where you're doing business with people you really don't want to do business with are you struggling with getting business period mm -hmm. are you having trouble writing a blog post because you don't know what to say um, are you struggling with understanding what it is your target audience or your consumer mm -hmm. is looking for chances are if that is the case if you're struggling with that in business or for friendships, if you find yourself consistently in relationships with people that you don't really like who they are. True. Um, if you are struggling at work and you just keep, you know, bumping heads with your boss or with your employees, it's really about understanding yourself enough mm -hmm. to navigate situations in a way that keeps you the least stressed. So if you have those issues, chances are you need to create a personal brand for yourself. You need to identify mm -hmm. yourself. You need to kind of find yourself. Wow, wow. But I, I'm sure you're just going to say, hey, you, you need to no, find I don't. yourself. <laughs> Although sometimes we probably would like to. Uh, but, yeah, there are you know, some people you want to say, um, you're a little lost. And let yeah, me help you with yeah. some directions. <laughs> but you can't do that. But how do you deal with the inside? Because we, we just talked, when you're talking about personal branding, there is an inward change that has to take place, a place, an inward discovery. So how do you deal with that part of it? Or do you deal with that part of it? Um, actually, I don't deal with it specifically except to give the assignment. And there is an assignment that I give. I have a 12-week coaching program that I give people. Um, and in that particular product, in the very first few weeks, I'm walking you through assignments. Well, you're doing the assignment and then mm -hmm. we come back and discuss the assignment. And in that, we identify some things that could be troubling that you need to kind of overcome. Mm -hmm. It's all in those influences. And 
when I first started the coaching, I had people say, well, what if my influences are negative? Their influence is just the same. Whether That's the influence true. drew you towards something or they drew you away from something, it still influenced the decisions you made. Um, so the, in that process, what's happening is people are doing that introspection mm -hmm. and they're finding some areas that they should probably work on uh, personally mm -hmm. um, that could help them in just the growth of their personal brand. So I don't wow. deal with the problems per se myself. Mm -hmm. I help to identify them. Yeah. And then once my clients work on them, they, they see the value in having worked through those issues and how it kind of runs through their yeah. life. Yeah. yeah. Because I know when you and I would meet and um, I'd sit down, we had went back into my childhood, mm -hmm. which was really good. I mean, we went deep. Yeah. And I mean, so if someone needs that level that, that you and I had, are, are you able to do that for them, or am I just that awesome and special that you just did that for me? <laughs> well, like I said, in that, in that um, exercise that we did, you did have to go back into some of your childhood influences, and we, we walked through yes. that. We talked through that. I didn't know them personally, you know, obviously because I wasn't there, but I am able to converse with you about those challenges. Sometimes I'm able to identify with the challenges. I'm not a therapist or anything to give like factual right. advice, but from experiences, yes, I do discuss that. It is a discussion and I can give from my experience, yes, I can talk to you about that. But ultimately, I'll say, you know, if it's that deep of an issue, which you didn't have anything like that, you know, we'll point them in the direction of someone that can mm -hmm. help them. But ultimately what happens is you can see how whatever the challenge is or the struggle was mm -hmm. or whatever was what we identified was, um, you'll be able to see how it's affecting what you're doing now. Yeah. And then you'll know that you need to work on it if you need to make those changes. Wow. Because I know in most people's childhood, by the time they're five, they've already perceived something. And most of the times it's what they've been told. Mm -hmm. They've already perceived something about what they're supposed to do or who they're supposed to be. Already perceived it. And it's kind of hard when you discover, hey, I'm not that person who they and it's, say I was. It's would. very difficult to come out of it. I'll tell you, as a yes. child, I was I loved math. Math was one of my favorite subjects, and I was told my whole life, "Well, you need to be an engineer because you love math. Mm -hmm. You know, you're a woman. It's a field that they're not in as much. Mm -hmm. You should, you should, you'll get paid." You know, and I went to school and 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 started engineering and mm -hmm. got into it and did an internship. And the, after the first year of the internship, I went back to my boss and I was like. I think I'm a major in marketing. And he looked at me and he said, I knew engineering wasn't for you because during the interview, I figured if I put you in a hole by yourself and shut the door, you'd pull your hair out because you couldn't stand it. And he was right. Yeah. I need to be around people. But when you try to live the life someone else wants you to live, it's going to come out. It's going to bubble out and you're yes. going to recognize at some point that this is not where I'm supposed to be. Now, the goal is to figure that out before you've lived your whole life doing something yes. you don't want to do, which again, I, which, I did. <laughs> which again is the value in discovering what your personal brand is. Because when you do that, you do recognize your preferences. You do understand your non-negotiables, uh, what you will and won't do, what you do and don't like, yeah. and you'll begin to make better decisions based, based on, on that. that. So ultimately, you'll, you'll walk into your, your purpose. Oh, wow. And see, that was just obvious opposite for me. I just hated math. <laughs> I literally, but all the jobs, the